what up gangster now we are going to create the ui for our game specifically the timer ui and the air ui so over here we're going to right click and over here in the hierarchy we're going to right click and create a canvas there you go so for this canvas i am going to call it gameplay canvas and i am going to set here the render mode to screen space camera and attach the main camera and set here the scale mode to scale with screen size and the screen size is going to be 1920 by 1080 and over here I'm going to set the width to match width and height equally now if you don't know what this is make sure that you watch some tutorials for unity UI because I'm not going to go and explain everything this is basically our reference resolution that we are going to use and based on that resolution we are going to create or the UI elements are going to scale and so on and so forth but even if you don't know you can follow by just doing what I did but if you don't make sure that you watch some tutorials about it I have plenty of those in my game development academy but that's another story just go and enroll and see anyways the next step is I am going to create the icons for our time and the air. So right clicking over here, I'm going to go UI and create an image. And this one is going to be my time icon, not tomb, it's time icon. And I'm going to set the anchor for this bad boy at the top left corner. The anchor is going to determine the origin when we say 0, 0, 0, for example. So 0 for the X and for the Y and for the Z, you see it's the top left corner. So I'm going to position the X at 73 and the Y is going to be minus 67 and for the image over here, for the source image that is, from the assets we are going to select the time image and there you go. Now I'm also going to scale it a little bit down so it's not going to be the width and the height, it's not going to be 100 by 100, it's going to be 80 by 80 and this is how it looks like approximately in our game. So the next step is to create a slider, which is going to be the child of this timer or time icon. So I'm going to right click and go UI and create a slider. And for this slider, I'm simply going to rename it to time slider to time slider. There you go. Set here the X at 185 and the Y is going to be zero. And we are going to set the width to 251 and the height is 71. And there you go. So this is how it looks like. Of course, I'm going to remove the handle because it looks a little bit creepy because if I do this, look at that. And no, it's not here. It's over here. There you go. I don't want it to have a handle because it looks weird with a handle. So over here, the handle slide area, simply remove it. Let's go over here and adjust this. So going back over here, the fill area needs to be a little bit larger. So I'm going to move this simply over here and there you go. So if I go here in the game, this is how it looks like. So going a little bit up and over here, if I reduce the slider, so down and if I reduce it, there you go. This is how it looks like. As for the color of the slider, I am going to go here and I'm going to touch the background. I believe we need to touch the fill area. Let me just see here. Yeah, the fill area. So I'm going to click here on this icon, whatever or however this icon is called this. I don't know. And I'm going to go over here, hover over and there you go. This is going to be our color. So again, if you did not notice what I clicked, I clicked on this right here and it's not allowing me to do that. So I cannot show you. But basically this icon here, it, it looks like pick a color from the screen. You see, that's the one. And then you pick this color for the time. It's very, very simple. So there we go. This is when it comes to our time slider. If you like this tutorial series and you would like to learn more about game development, you can do that in my Game Development Academy where I have more comprehensive tutorials, more detailed tutorials, where I teach you more advanced stuff than in this tutorial. Link is down below for a small monthly fee. You can support this cause and you can learn something. Click the link down below and check it out. Now, in order for us to create our air icon, we're simply going to take the time slider, duplicate it, and I'm going to call this one air slider, or actually, excuse me, this is for the slider, but I'm going to select the whole icon and duplicate it, and instead of time icon, I'm going to call this one air icon, so air, there you go, and for this bad boy, what I'm going to do is simply position it a little bit down, so the Y position is going to be minus 182, and for the icon, we're going to filter here for the air. This is that icon. There you go. I'm going to leave everything as is, except here. I am going to call this one air slider. 
and I am going to set the fill area color to be the greenish one, which is the color of our air. And there you go. So if I go here in our game, they are at the top left corner and voila, if I start to move the slider a little bit down, there you go. This is going to indicate that our slider is draining or the air is draining and so on and so forth. Now, in order for us to make this work, we need to create a script. There you go. So over here, I'm going to right click and create an empty game object that I'm going to call gameplay controller. And this is the bad boy, the dude, the gangster, the ultimate boss in our game. Basically, this is a game object who is going to control the gameplay. So I'm going to right click over here and create a C sharp script that I'm going to call it. And for whatever reason, it did not create it. Click on it. Why isn't it creating strips from the first time? So I'm going to call this bad boy gameplay controller. By the way, and I misspelled it. So it's, I wrote control, whatever. So over here, it is controller. Now, when you rename a clip, uh, script here, the class name, you also need to rename the file name over here or otherwise it will not work. So it will have errors and problems and whatnot. So rename those two and now attach this bad boy on the gameplay controller. Now, going back to my question, if something is not clear when it comes to setting up the slider and all of this, make sure you ask in the comment down below. But basically this is just moving things around, setting them up, changing the icons and that's all there is to it. Nothing more, nothing less. So over here inside of the gameplay, we are going to have a few variables. The first being is the instance of the gameplay controller because I am going to make this an instance. It's much easier to work with instances because it's a static class. We simply call the class dot name and we access everything. So over here, we're going to have a public static gameplay controller instance. Next, we're also going to have a references to our sliders and over here, because of that, at the top, we need to say using Unity Engine.ui. And now we are going to have a reference to our sliders. So over here, I wrote serialize field. We're going to have a private slider. One is going to be the air slider, and the other one is going to be the time slider. There we go. For our air, we are also going to have a private float. One is going to be air threshold, or how much of air can we have? By default, I set that to 20. And over here, the time threshold, I set that. So time threshold is equal to 20 as well. Also, we are going to have a private float. One is going to be the air value. So the current value of the air and the time value, which is the current value of the time. And we're going to have a serialized field. One is going to be private float air deduct deduct value. So this is how much you're going to deduct from the air or deduct, not deduct, deduct, deduct. There you go. English 101. So remove, subtract, better yet, subtract from the air in order for it to reach zero and then we're going to die. And over here, we're also going to have a private bool variable game running to determine if the game is running or not. Because if the game is not running, then, you know, we are not going to run the game. If the game is running, we are going to run the game. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> Just kidding. But we are going to use this variable to determine if the sliders, air slider and the time slider should continue running when the player dies and so on and so forth. So in the awake function, we're simply going to test if the instance is equal to null, meaning the instance of the class. And that is true. So if it's true, then we're going to say instance is equal to this. That's all there is to it. And after that, inside of our start function, we need to set up the initial values. What does that mean? That means that we need to set the time value. So we need to say time value is going to be equal to the time threshold. So this is how much time we have in our level. Next, we are going to set the time slider that maximum value it can have to the time value. So time value, which is basically the time threshold. This is the maximum time. And I can also name this instead of time threshold, time mac or maximum time or something like that. So we can also call it like that, time maximum or air maximum, 
that can be. So here, instead of air threshold, we can say, for example, Air Max. And this, this, these are not Nikes. I'm not giving you any Nikes or whatever. This is just the name of the variable you see here, Time Max. So these are now Nikes. Don't be going and telling people, oh, there is this YouTuber giving free Air Max. No, no, I'm not. So time slider max value is equal to time value, which is the time maximum value. The time slider dot minimum value is going to be zero and the current value of the timer. So time slider dot value is equal to time value. There we go. So as a recap, what the hell is this here, teacher? So first things first, we're setting the value of the time to be the maximum value over here. Next, we're setting the maximum value that we can have in the time slider. So the maximum value, the, the time slider, he can have a maximum value of 100, of 300, and I can show you that right now. If we go over here, and I'm going to take the air slider as an example. So notice here, we have the maximum value, minimum is zero, maximum value is one. We can set that to a thousand, you see? And then we move it over here. Actually, no, 100 is the maximum. Can we set it three? Yes. So 999 basically is the maximum, a three digit number. I thought we can be a thousand, but you get the point. You see, you get the point. How can we set the maximum value? So we're setting the maximum value over, over here. So the maximum value is equal to the time value, which currently has the time max. The minimum value is zero, so it cannot go below zero. And the dot value is the current value of the slider. So the current value is this time value. We're going to do the same thing with the air value. So air value is equal to air max. And then over here, our air slider dot maximum value is equal to the air value. The air slider dot minimum value is zero. And the air slider dot value is equal to the air value. And there you go. The exact same principle, the exact same everything that I explained for the timer also applies for the air. And last step is we need to say the game is running. So game running is equal to true. Otherwise our game will not run and simple like that. Because over here in the update, first things first, we're going to have a void reduce time function like this. And we're going to have a void reduce air function. And inside of the update, we're going to call both. So reduce air and reduce time, so reduce, there you go. But here above these two, if the game is not running, so if the game is not running, then we're going to return because we don't want to subtract air and subtract time if the game is not running. So this is for what we're going to use the game running variable, because again, when the player dies, we are going to say game running is false. And then over here, we are asking with an exclamation mark if the game is not running, then return true, because if it's false, the exclamation mark will make it what's, af what's the opposite. The opposite of false is true, which means we will hit the return statement and these functions will not get executed. Now, when it comes to the reducing time, again, these are all simple code snippets. I'm not writing some out of the world algorithms. To reduce the time, we're going to say time value minus equals time dot delta time. That's all there is to it. And then we're setting the time slider dot value to be equal to the time value. And there you go. So that's why over here we are setting, as you can see, the timer slider or time slider value to be equal to the time value. So we're setting that over here. And when we subtract from the time value, time dot delta time, and time dot delta time is the seconds milliseconds, basically, it took one frame to complete. So this is the time between frames. But we do need to do the following. We need to say if our time value is less than or equal to zero. So if it gets to the point where it is less than or equal to zero, our game running is now going to be equal to false and over here, game over. So we are going to call game over. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the air. So going back over here, we're simply going to say air value minus equals the air deduct value multiplied with time dot delta time. And then over here, air slider dot value is going to be equal to air value. And the same principle applies. So if our air value is less than or equal to zero, then again, game running is false. And then we are going to game over. There you go. So we can test this out right now. If I go back here in my editor, 
for whatever reason did I attach it why isn't it loading what did we do oh okay yeah I understand so I need to remove this and I need to attach this so if I double click it there you go and now everything will work you saw the problem that we had just now because I misspelled here so the name here needs to match up with the name here otherwise it will have problems and again we have problems because well I will have to copy this and I believe I will have to remove it you see this is the issue by simply not naming everything correctly so there you go I'm going to remove it right now and create it again for whatever you see gameplay controller there you go so now let me just redo all of this basically simply you know selecting everything and copy pasting it and there you go so if I go back now and attach it it is going to work it was not even loading you saw that it was not even loading now everything has been loaded so over here make sure that you attach the time slider and over here the air slider now <laughs> actually the air goes over here and the time goes over here now you saw the problem we had for just because the names over here didn't match so the name here didn't match with the name over here so make sure that you change that we had to delete the script it was not loading it and so on and so forth but we can test this out right now if I hit the play button you will notice that look at, at the top left corner so everything is being deducted look at that so it is being deducted and so on and so forth and it's being deducted and you get the point of course we are going to increase these values by picking up our collectibles which we are going to do starting from the next video but if something is not clear for this video make sure that you ask in the comment down below we explained this over here we also explained everything over here but if something is not clear make sure ask down below don't be shy those who are shy never learn that's a wisdom from me carve it in a stone of gold and uh, yeah other than that I will see you guys in the next video where else I'm going to say I don't know you in person I'm, I'm a virtual figure here online I'm not going to see you when you go out so I will see you here on YouTube again take care and uh, yeah see you in the next one